Hello everyone! In this video, we will discuss the distinction or pinagkaiba ng arbitrary detention, serious illegal detention, slight illegal detention, at unlawful arrest. Hindi muna natin papag-usapan ano ang difference ng serious at saka slight. Gagawa lang po tayo ng video regarding these two crimes. Dito sa video na ito, we will just discuss the distinction between arbitrary detention, illegal detention, itong dalawa, and unlawful arrest. Now, bakit natin kailangang alamin ano ang pinagkaiba nila? Kasi they share a similar trait. They have a similarity. At ano ang similar Nila. If we look at the different articles involved, Article 124, Arbitrary Detention, the offender detains a person. Kung titignan naman natin ang Article 267, which is Serious Illegal Detention, it involves the act of detaining another person, gaya ng Arbitrary Detention. At dito naman sa Slight Illegal Detention, ganun din. Commits the crimes described in the next preceding article, which is etong Serious Illegal Detention na meron ding the act of detaining another person. At dito sa Article 269, Unlawful Arrest. Meron ding detaining another person. In other words, dito sa apat na to, they have a similarity. And that is, the offender detains another person. Hindi tayo mahihirapan kapag ang question is, what is the crime committed if a person detains another? Kasi di ba ang answer lang natin, natin is, either of the four. Yung apat, arbitrary detention, serious illegal detention, slight illegal detention, or unlawful arrest. Magkakaproblema tayo kapag ganito ang question. What is the crime committed if the clerk of court detains a female employee? So very specific na ang question. It asks for a particular crime. Hindi kagaya dito sa question na to, medyo general. Pwede mong i-answer ang apat, pero dito sa question na to, very specific. Kaya sa video na ito, kailangan nating alamin ang pinagkaiba nitong apat na crimes na to. Arbitrary detention, serious illegal detention, slight illegal detention, and unlawful arrest para kayang-kaya nating sagutin ang mga ganong klase na tanong. So let's start. Let us first discuss the distinction between arbitrary detention and illegal detention. Serious illegal detention and slight illegal detention. So ano nga ba ang pinagkaiba ng arbitrary detention sa illegal detention? First is, dito sa arbitrary detention under Article 124, it is under Title 2 or Crimes Against the Fundamental Law of the State. Now sinasabi nating Crimes Against the Fundamental Law of the State because they violate certain provisions of the Bill of Rights under our Constitution. And then, under Title 9, Crimes Against Personal Liberty and Security, we have illegal detention, serious illegal detention, and slight illegal detention. And then, the other distinction is, dito sa arbitrary detention, the offender is a public officer or employee, while in serious illegal detention, and slight illegal detention, the offenders are private individuals. Sa arbitrary detention, it is under Title II or Crimes Against the Fundamental Law of the State. While in illegal detention, both serious and slight, they fall under Title IX or Crimes Against the Personal Liberty and Security. Now with respect sa offenders naman, kung sino ang magiging liable dito na crimes, Sa arbitrary detention, we have public officer or employee. Pag sinabi natin public officer or employee, they are under the employee of the government. Dito sa serious illegal detention, slight illegal detention, the offenders here are private individuals. Let us now proceed to questions. First question, mark a policeman arrested and detained his enemy Paolo in one of the detention cells to teach him a lesson. Mark concocted a story that he saw Paolo commit a crime even if it was not true. In other words, nagsinungaling yung pulis na sinasabi niyang nagcommit ng crime si Paolo pero hindi naman pala. At dahil dito, kinulong niya and dinitain niya si Paolo. After Paolo begged Mark to forgive him, Mark unlocked the cell and released Paolo. Eventually, pinakawalan niya naman Si Paolo. Now, what is the crime committed by Mark, the policeman? Kung titignan natin yung problem, si Mark dito ay isang police. At dahil siya ay police, he is therefore a public officer. At dahil sa public officer siya, crime committed is arbitrary detention. Mark committed the crime of arbitrary detention. Another question. David, a businessman, was angry at his business rival, Jamie. When Jamie's son, Johnny, visited the store of David, David dragged Johnny inside the storage room and locked him up for 5 hours. Dito sa problem na to, si David dinitain niya yung anak ni Jamie na si Johnny sa storage room for 5 hours. Now what crime did David commit? So again, kung titignan natin yung difference ng arbitrary detention at illegal detention, dito sa illegal detention, the offenders here are 
private individuals. So dito sa question na to, the answer is slight illegal detention. Kasi nga, the offender here is a private individual. Now, this is a very important reminder when it comes to arbitrary detention. Kailangang the public officer must have a duty under the law to detain a person. In other words, you are vested with the authority to detain a person or to order the detention of another person. Kagaya ng ating kapulisan, ng NBI, ng AFP, at yung mga taong vested with the authority to maintain peace and order. Question. The city treasurer had his eyes on a young lady, Maria, working in the office, but Maria never gave him attention. In other words, hindi siya pinapansin ni Maria. Feeling hurt, the city treasurer locked Maria inside the office late afternoon. Kinulong niya ngayon si Maria. After Maria cried for almost an hour, the city treasurer took pity and unlocked the door. Now, is the city treasurer liable for arbitrary detention? Again, if we go back to the distinction between arbitrary detention and illegal detention. Sa arbitrary detention, ang offender dito ay public officer. Dito, sa question na to, is the city treasurer a public officer? Yes, he is a public officer. So does that mean liable siya for arbitrary detention? Kasi nga, under arbitrary detention, the offender is a public officer. The answer is no. Kailangang the public officer must have a duty under the law to detain a person. Dito sa question natin, itong city treasurer, wala sa kanyang authority ang mag-detain. No, because although the city treasurer is a public officer, it is not part of his duty or function to detain or arrest a person. He is liable instead for illegal detention. We have more questions here. Can a private individual be liable for arbitrary detention under Article 124? Sa arbitrary detention, the offenders are public officers or employees. Now, dito sa question, can private individuals be liable for arbitrary detention? The answer is yes in the following cases. When there is conspiracy or when the offender acted as an accomplice or he acted as an accessory. Kailangan ninyong i-remember ang inyong book 1 of the Revised Penal Code. Kailangan maganda yung foundation ninyo sa inyong book 1 kasi they are all connected. Next question, can a public officer be liable for illegal detention? Again, sa illegal detention, dito sa serious or slight, the offenders are private individuals. Dito sa question, can a public officer be liable for illegal detention? The answer is yes in the following cases. When the public officer acted in purely private capacity. So kagaya sa previous example natin kanina, yung city treasurer. Or when the offender is an accomplice or is an accessory. So sa cases na to, pwedeng maging liable ang public officer for illegal detention, which is usually committed by private individuals. Ngayon naman, aalamin natin ano ang pinagkaiba ng arbitrary detention at unlawful arrest. First is, sa arbitrary detention, as we've mentioned earlier, it is under Title II or Crimes Against the Fundamental Law of the State. While dito sa unlawful arrest, under Article 269, it falls under Title IX or Crimes Against Personal Liberty and Security. And if you look at Article 124, Arbitrary Detention, the offender here is public officer or employee. While in unlawful arrest under Article 269, the offender here is any person. Now, if you take a look at this, dito sa arbitrary detention and unlawful arrest, sa arbitrary detention, it is under Title 2, while unlawful arrest, Title 9 of the Revised Penal Code. Dito sa arbitrary detention, the offender is a public officer, while in unlawful arrest, the offender is any person. Now, dito sa public officer, as we've mentioned earlier, the public officer here must have the authority to detain or order the detention of the person accused of the crime. Gaya ng mga police, Dito naman sa unlawful arrest, ang meaning ng any person ay either a private individual, yung civilian, or a public officer who does not have the authority to detain or order the detention of a person accused of a crime. So although public officer ka, kung wala ka namang authority to detain a person or it is not part of your function to order the detention of a person accused of a crime, then ang magiging liability mo ay for unlawful arrest. Pero kapag meron kang authority to detain or to order the detention of a person, ang magiging liability mo ay arbitrary detention. Example, Kyrie, the store owner, discovered that his cell phone was missing. Leonard was there so Kyrie thought it was Leonard who stole his CP. Kyrie arrested Leonard and brought him to the police station. Leonard was later on released by the police. Now what is the crime committed by Kyrie? Of course, the first question that we need to ask is, Sino ba si Kyrie? Is he a public officer or is he a private individual? So in this case, Kyrie is 
a private individual. So ang crime na nakumit niya ay obviously unlawful arrest under Article 269. Next question. Zaito, a municipal treasurer, conducted a citizen's arrest on Looney and told him that he was stealing from a grocery store when in fact it was not true. Zaito delivered Looney to the police station where he was detained. Looney was eventually released. Now what is the crime committed by Zaito? So since municipal treasurer siya, he is a public officer. So does that mean na ang crime na nakumit ni Zaito ay arbitrary detention? Kasi public officer? The answer is no. Kasi nga, although he is a public officer, he does not have the authority to detain a person. So therefore, the crime committed by Zaito is unlawful arrest under Article 269. Next question. Brody, a policeman, was receiving payments from jeepney drivers plying a certain route. Pedro stopped giving money to Brody. As a result, Brody handcuffed Pedro and told him that he was driving carelessly even if it was not true. Brody detained Pedro in one of the cells. After one day, Brody was released because the prosecutor found no probable cause. Kinulong ni Brody si Pedro kasi hindi na siya binibigyan, obviously. Now, what is the crime committed by Brody? Again, the question that we need to ask ourselves is, is Brody a public officer or a private individual? And if he is a public officer, does he have the authority to detain a person? The answer is yes in both questions. Brody is a public officer and... He has the authority to detain kasi nga, he is a policeman. Therefore, Brody committed the crime of arbitrary detention under Article 124. Now, let's go to the distinction between unlawful arrest and illegal detention. Ano ba ang kaibahan ng unlawful arrest sa illegal detention? Dito sa unlawful arrest, the offender is any person. Sa serious illegal detention and slight illegal detention, the offender is a private individual. Pero kung titignan natin, wala namang difference. Kasi dito sa any person, he is also a private individual or a public officer who is not authorized to detain a person or to order the detention of a person. Dito naman sa illegal detention, pwede rin namang public officers dito who are not authorized to detain a person and who are acting in their private capacity. Dito sa unlawful arrest, the purpose is to accuse the offended party of a crime he did not commit and deliver him to the authority for the filing of the necessary charges. In other words, the purpose bakit mo siya i-detain is to deliver him. Dalhin mo siya sa proper authorities para masampahan siya ng kaukulang kaso. While dito sa illegal detention, in both of these crimes, the purpose is to restrain the offended party and to deny him of his liberty. Again, dito sa unlawful arrest, there is always a purpose. Dito sa illegal detention, walang purpose. Your, your purpose is just to detain him, to lock him up, and to deny him of his liberty. While dito sa unlawful arrest, ang purpose mo is para masampahan siya ng kaukulang kaso, para dalin siya sa police, para mafilean siya ng case. Kaya kung titignan natin ang Article 269, unlawful arrest, detaining another for the purpose of delivering him to the proper authorities. So there is always a purpose. Dinitain mo siya kasi gusto mo siyang mafilean ng appropriate criminal charge. Question. David, a businessman, was angry at his business rival, Jamie. When Jamie's son, Johnny, visited the store of David, David dragged Johnny inside the storage room and locked him up for five hours. What crime did David commit? So, ang choices dito, did David commit the crime of unlawful arrest or illegal detention? Now, the answer is illegal detention kasi wala yung purpose na to deliver him to the proper authorities. Kasi dito, ni-lock up niya lang at dinitain niya lang talaga si Johnny. Hindi niya dinala sa police station. Hindi siya nag-file ng case. So there is no purpose of delivering him to the proper authorities. Kaya ang crime na nakumit ni David is only illegal detention. Another question. Chu and Badang were fighting over who was the real owner of a piece of land. When they saw each other, they engaged in a fist fight. Nagsuntukan sila. Badang was knocked unconscious and Chu tied him up and brought him to the nearest police station. So dito, na KOC Badang. Tapos, dinala siya ni Chu sa police station. Chu lodged the complaint before the police station. The prosecutor eventually found no probable cause and Badang was released. Now, what is the crime committed by Chu? Ang crime ba na kinumit ni Chu is unlawful arrest or arbitrary detention? Of course, dito sa problem na to, dinala niya sa police station para mafile ng appropriate criminal charge. Therefore, ang crime na nakumit ni Chu ay unlawful arrest. So yun po ngayon ang difference ng unlawful arrest at illegal detention. Now, let us recap and review what we have just learned. Ang difference ng arbitrary detention at 
illegal detention. Sa arbitrary detention, the offender here is a public officer or employee and not just any public officer. The public officer must have a duty under the law to detain a person or order the detention of a person. Kung hindi siya public officer or kung wala siyang authority to detain a person, then mauhulog siya as illegal detention. He will be considered as a private individual. How about the distinction between arbitrary detention and unlawful arrest? Gaya nga ng sinabi natin, sa unlawful arrest, there is always a purpose. And that purpose is to deliver the offended party to the appropriate authorities. And with respect sa offender naman, the offender here is a public officer or employee. While dito sa unlawful arrest, the offender here is any person. It can also be a public officer. Pero sa public officer na to, kailangang he has no authority to detain a person or to order the detention of a person. Now what about the difference between unlawful arrest and illegal detention? Again, sa unlawful arrest, it refers to any person. While sa illegal detention, it refers to private individuals. At syempre, sa unlawful arrest, there is always a purpose. And that purpose is to deliver the offended party to the proper authorities. While sa illegal detention, there is a mere lockup or detention for the purpose of depriving him of his liberty. Para lang ikulong siya. Now that's it. Sana po marami tayong natutunan sa video na ito. That's all. Study hard and pray harder. Thank you very much.